morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning devotion, Wednesday, uh, the Reverend Church of Moja. I'm Pastor Jackson Cheres. Um, we're talking about God is good. And we are beginning from there. Uh, Sometimes we are not aware what you, who is listening to me, you are going through. But where we can meet is in prayer. So let's pray together this morning as we begin our morning devotion. Father, we, we are glad that you have given us another opportunity. With the listener, wherever this listener will be, Lord, I pray, either they are at the place of work, at home, or even in any different location in this country, outside this country, it is my prayer that God will remember and bless us. That this devotion is not done by men as it is, but may the Holy Spirit quicken somebody's heart to encourage that person that you are a wonderful God and you are so good. So this morning I pray for restoration where there is need for restoration. I pray for healing where there is need for healing. And I pray, Lord, for encouragement this particular day for all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I'm talking about God is good. And I propose to put this in a context of, um, or rather in an example of Jesus and Joseph in the Bible. And I would like to read a scripture in the book of Genesis 37 from verse 23. Genesis 37, verse 23 to 24. And the Bible says, and this is talking about Joseph who had gone to see the brothers and being sent by the father. So this is what the Bible says. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped him, they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. That's what they did to Joseph. Let me read about Jesus in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. I'm, I'm reading New King James. The Bible says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. I want you to see the life of Joseph. That apart from him being stripped of the cloth, he was also put in a pit. I want you to see Jesus. Apart from him being stripped of the cloth, he was also buried. He died and was buried, but he rose again. I am repeating this as I said yesterday. May we never lose focus in where we are going as a, as a believer. And if you are not a believer, may you become a believer. May we never lose focus because when you look at this man called Joseph, he was at the point of being killed. But someone said, no, no, no. Instead of being, killing him, let's do this. So they did that. They put him in a pit. But I want you to see that even though they put him in a pit, at one point, he was removed from the same pit. Even though they buried Jesus, the day came when he rose again. I want to encourage a Christian or a non-Christian who want to become a Christian that never despair that you are now so down, either at the place of work or business. You are so down in different ways and in different capacities. But then there is a rising up again. There is power to resurrect power to remove you from the pit. It doesn't matter what, how far you have gone in this life. Because sometimes people say, I am so low, I am so down, I am so, I am so discouraged, I don't know what to do. Sometimes people say, I have reached the end of the road. But this morning, may you listen to this message, that this same man, who is called Joseph, who was put in a pit, they removed him and sold him to Egypt. 
And because somebody said, there was no, you know, I assume it was nowadays when you must have a passport and what have you. Joseph was taken to Egypt as a slave. That was the best way possible for him to enter into another land. So this morning, may you be encouraged. Jesus himself, who died, and there were people who were laughing. Probably they were saying, you said you are the king of the Israel, you are the king of the Jewish people. Why don't you say? In fact, one of those who were with him, the thief, they were like, why don't you save yourself? Why don't you help yourself? Why don't you, why don't you do as a king? Don't forget, and I told the Bible Marathon, that sometimes we look at these people who do not like Jesus, but we also need to come to a place where we realize. What happens when somebody says he's the son of God, and you know the father, you know the mother, you know the village where he was born, they know him as a carpenter, and they, and they knew also the stories about God. That one day when God came down at Mount Sinai, there was some shaking and people feared because they heard the voice of God. It was everybody, everybody was trembling. So when they say, this is the son of God, they also expected him to come that way. That they may be able to, you know, shake the ground. People feel like, but then he came as a normal person. So when it comes to this kind of a situation, people do not, did not expect him to be like killed. If he's the son of God, why do you die? So then they were not able to believe that this is the son of God. So they ended up talking bad about him, scorning him. And even at times they had to, they were spitting, as they spit, they spat on him. This morning, I want to encourage you, no matter how much you have gone down, probably you are a very good businessman and you are staying in that side of, the upper side of the town. And now things have gone down that you have had to look for a single room. You don't know even how to handle your children because you have to sleep together in one room. If you are hearing me this morning, may this message be for you. That even in that bit where you are in right now, in that single room, God is able to raise you up again. Do you know that this man, Joseph, ended up becoming the second to Pharaoh? From the pit, he was taken as a slave to prison and to become a prime minister of Egypt. Do you know that this same Jesus, whom they killed, put him and they buried him, he rose up again on the third day. And today, he is seated at the right hand of God. That tells you something. No matter how much you have been put down, you will rise up again. We will speak a blessing to your business. It will rise up again. You don't have a job today, but what about tomorrow? You don't have a job today, but what about next week? You don't have a job today, but what about you being called to do an interview? So may you come to a place where you're saying, even if I'm down today, tomorrow is better. I will be able to rise up again. Why? Because the Son of God was able to rise from the grave. From the grave. I don't know whether you are aware that when people decide to bury, then they are sure this person is dead. But he rose up again on the third day. When these children of Jacob, they were putting Joseph in the pit, they were sure they were teaching him a lesson. Because he had come saying, I've dreamed, I've dreamed. So they were saying, today is your last day. You will never tell us about these dreams again. Only to be surprised that this same Joseph became a savior. Because he was in Egypt. There was food in Egypt. He was the man in charge of giving out food. They had to survive because there was Joseph in Egypt to save them. So this morning, nobody will kill your dream. And that is my prayer. Nobody will disappoint you to the point of you surrendering and saying, now because they have put you in that such a, a place where you feel like you are so down, you rise up again. God is able to raise you just as he raised Jesus and just as he allowed Joseph to rise up again, you will also rise up again. This same God who did all this is a good God. A God who knows, who knew that this man called Joseph is despised by the brothers. So he decided to elevate him, to bring him to a position where everybody in Egypt, apart from Pharaoh, they had to bow. 
they had to surrender. They, I mean, they had to respect Joseph because he was so given an authority. Actually, he was given authority apart from the authority of Pharaoh, who was actually in charge of the country. So today, may you know that God can raise you up again. You can become a somebody again in this life. May you allow me to tell you this. As I read this scripture in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 18. This is about Jesus. The Bible says, now as he, he was walking, no, now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And this is what Jesus says. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. What Jesus was saying is that when you look at my body, when you look at my face, I am a human being because Jesus was a human being at that point. And he spoke like a human being. And he was saying, forget about looking at people and you think they are good. There is only one who is good. That is God. And so, when we are measuring ourselves, you are looking at your friends. You are in college together. Today, they are somewhere. They are, you are looking at your colleagues. You started work together. Today, they are both houses. You have not bought even one. You look like you are so down. You don't want even to meet them on the road because some of them are driving. You don't have a car. May you listen to me this morning. This same God is able to lift you up from that bottom. Actually, from that bit. He's able to lift you up again. And anything that had died in you, because sometimes you had a very good dream, but the dream is like was stolen from you, it died. Today we are praying it will resurrect again. You will be able to dream. You will be able to go to another level. I'm telling you, walio kuchekelea, watakusalamia naeshima. Walio kudharao, watakusalamia naeshima. Why? God is going to lift you up. Agree with me. Let us pray together. Let us call upon God to restore this same God. When David, everything had been taken away, the wives, the children, everything had been taken away. But the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And everything was restored plus more. So today, I want you to know also, that the meaning of the name Joseph is add me another. Add is an additional name. That is what the mother said. That by giving birth to Joseph, he actually petitioned God to add another one. And of course, God was able to add Benjamin. So today, may God increase and add something into your life. May God add something, move into a place of multiplication and make a way where there seems to be no way. Allow me to pray with you this prayer. Let's, let's be, be able to be in a prayer together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I am glad that you are hearing me this morning. And I pray, God, do not abandon my listener. Either they are so down and you, you, are, you are able to lift them up from that bit. Just like you, Joseph was removed from the bit. Just like Jesus was able to resurrect again from the grave. May you help my listener to come out of the pit. If this business that has gone down, I pray for resurrection of that business. If this marriage that has gone down, I pray for restoration. And if it is a job that they lost, I pray for another job with a better salary. That's my prayer. And Lord, if there is somebody that is so down because he's so sick, I pray for healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Allow me to pray with you for salvation. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner. Please forgive me. And write my name in the book of life. If you pray that prayer, please write to us on the numbers on the screen and we shall be glad to respond to you. May God bless you and may you have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>